Welcome to Net Zero. I'm climate activist Samira Malik. How can innovative battery technology pave the way for a greener future in the transportation industry and beyond? Joining us on Net Zero today is Nikita Balir Singh, the co-founder and CIO of Nexus Power, an innovative company manufacturing rechargeable, bioorganic, and biodegradable batteries for electric vehicles. With a strong background in business management and a recipient of multiple awards, Nikita brings her expertise to the forefront of the industry, guiding aspiring entrepreneurs and making a lasting impact on the path towards a greener future. Welcome to Net Zero, Nikita. Nikita, yep. you've developed eco-friendly batteries that utilize crop residue as a raw material. Can you share more about the environmental benefits of the same and how it addresses the issue of agricultural waste? First, that we keep a check on the pollution levels, uh, mainly air pollution levels and smoke. Second, and essentially, we take care of waste. So we ensure that the batteries don't produce any waste. The waste crop residue is also used as a raw material for another industry. And we also make sure that these batteries are completely biodegraded in the soil so that we do not leave out anything that, you know, needs further attention in due course of time. And in this entire process of manufacturing and extraction and filtration of raw material, we have a byproduct which is ethanol, you know, which helps us uh, build fertilizer and then put it back into the soil so we further look at how we can enhance uh, agriculture production and things like that. So certainly I think uh, this is how we impact the environment and we plan to reduce carbon emissions as much as possible in the, by the next two or three years, uh, you know, however it works in the metrics. So now, given the charging speed and the longer lifespan of Nexus Power's batteries, how do you see these advancements influencing the widespread adoption of electric vehicles? And what's their role in achieving a net zero emissions future? So currently, the batteries we get, we take about three, four hours to charge it. Uh, you know, there's not avail enough available infrastructure also, you know, on the highways or for a long drive. So it's kind of difficult to actually adapt to the entire electric mobility space until we fix these loopholes. If your charging time is hardly 10 to 15 minutes, then you wouldn't actually even mind staying back or taking a halt at the charging station on the highway, recharging your vehicle and then driving forward. Secondly, range is, I think it's a relative concept because every vehicle design according to their aerodynamics will have a different range that the same battery configuration might provide. So in this process, the materials we use, they have a tendency to hold charge for a little longer time. But it just provides a longer range, again, adding to the satisfaction of the user that you can drive it on a long run. So we can start looking at a perspective of using batteries in long drive options for longer transport or, you know, transport of goods and services also. So that is how we can uh, integrate these batteries and it helps in shifting mobility from conventional IC engine based vehicles to a pure electric mobility space and that is what I think is going to make a major impact in terms of carbon emissions also. So as someone who is on the forefront of the intersection between technology and sustainability specifically, what advancements or future trends are you most excited about in the coming years and how do you see these developments shaping the path towards a more sustainable future? What's the most fascinating in this entire space is that the environment has so much that we can harness from. Just that we've not tried to use it as much. Or maybe we've, we've tried it, but in this race of industrializing the entire process, we've probably forgotten the very basics. So when, once we get back and then we integrate industrialization with our environmental basics, I think a lot of change is possible and we should be very close to our dream of having the very green, sustainable world eventually. But I look forward to all of the ideas that people are talking about to actually take shape in reality in the world. Lastly, um, I would like to ask, what advice would you give to other youth climate leaders on how they can effectively contribute to building a greener planet and advocate for, a, for sustainable solutions in their respective communities? Obviously, people are more aware. What I'd uh, like to see is how practically are we able to achieve all those goals and visions that we set for ourselves and how as individuals, people can contribute to that. So, I mean, it's in a space right now that we are making a lot of rules. We have tried to change uh, our garbage disposal bins. We are looking at waste recycling. We are looking at uh, using different resources. We are also looking at setting up 
all of these renewable energy sources for electricity and then there are solar plants and so on and so forth so what i'm looking forward to is you know how sharply can people analyze the situation how they can look at what's happening around and what new can be done what fresh needs to be done and most importantly i am looking to a future where you know we are not sitting as competitors even if we are different companies or different startups with multiple ideas i would want to look at a space where we integrate these ideas and thoughts that we have uh, my point is as a company we claim we want to you know reduce some 7000 tons of carbon billion tons of carbon by 2030 there would be another battery tech company who would say the same thing maybe say 10000 billion tons of carbon by 2030 if you integrate these two you might not achieve say 17 or 20000 billion tons but you would surely achieve at least 15 collectively because they have a different idea we have a different idea we put it together common manufacturing units would further reduce carbon emissions and the you know pollu pollution that would do to the environment because we are sharing the entire space so we take care of land and other spaces as well so let's just integrate the idea of you know, doing what we are doing. So let's just come together, do it as a whole, not as parts. Yeah. You know, there's a very common saying in Hindi, it says, boon, boon se sagar banta hai. Mm -hmm. So it's not one person's job to change the world. We all have to take the steps and take it together. So to conclude, um, this is climate activist Samaira Malik. I add my voice to the voices of my other net zero youth peers to monitor the action of our world leaders to achieve net zero commitments. Together, we can achieve net zero. Thank you.